Welcome back, gang. It's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com here with a beginner's guide to the ESO's latest edition, the Endless Archive. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics, a little bit about the builds, the mechanics, and what this is all about, especially the rewards you can earn and how to farm this the best way. This video is sponsored by Bethesda, and so if you wish to jump in and join the action, check the link in the description below and support this channel. Without further ado, here is the Endless Archive, what you need to know. So the Endless Archive, the too long didn't read on this. It's a new never ending dungeon with the leaderboard ranking system and reward. It launches with update 40. So as of the making this video as October 30th on PC and is coming on consoles November 14th. This is a part of the base game. You don't have to own the Necrom chapter or be a sub. As long as you own the Elder Scrolls Online, you'll be able to travel to and play the Endless Dungeon as part of the base game. There is a lot of different things to collect in here, specifically seven new class tree specific sets designed to buff skill lines to their full potential. There's also new titles, mementos, further customizations for your character, and a lot of things to collect as you can imagine. Something interesting about this arena is you're only going to have a total of three respawns before your run is over. The party composition, you can play the solo with a companion NPC or with two players, and the content does not scale based on how many people you bring in. There are two separate leaderboards, single player and also two player and you cannot use the armory assistant while you're in here so your gear while you're going on a score run similar to Vatishram or VMA is kind of locked so let's show you where to go and how to get to the endless archive so what you're going to do to get to the Endless Archive is you're going to zoom out all the way on your map and go to the Apocrypha Zone. This again is a part of the Necrom chapter, but you can see a little icon where you can click and actually go to the Endless Archive regardless if you own the Zone chapter or not. Once inside, there's a bunch of NPCs and a couple of merchants you want to familiarize yourself with. You're going to have a quest giver to start your run in the Endless Archive, which we'll explain a little bit more. There's going to be another merchant used to spend currency that you're going to earn inside of here and obtain rewards. And there's going to be another regular merchant that sells gear and some important buffs. Then you're going to have a portal to enter and leave the archive. Using this portal while inside the archive will not reset your runs. The Runic Threadweaver interacting with this object will reset your run, aka remove your threads or lives. So this is a way you can end your run and see your total progression. And the Reset Hourglass activating this will close the instance and reset it, even as solo to start back with a brand new instance, which is useful for farming specifically. So make sure to familiarize yourself with this area. It's pretty cool, pretty green, pretty Necrom. Moving along to the mechanics and kind of understanding the beginning and how to progress in here. So the first interesting thing is how the progression works and it's kind of foreign from all the other mechanics in progression arenas in the Elder Scrolls Online. So you have progression based on completing an arc. An arc is broken up into stages and cycles. So instead of like rounds and stages, you get one more thing in the middle called cycles. This image here shows your UI in the top right corner as you're gonna see your run. You start out with one and it works actually right to left, not left to right. So the stages is the first icon, cycles the second, arc the third, and you start with one. So stages, each stage has three fights. Each individual stage has these portals that spawn waves of mobs, essentially three waves per stage. Cycles. After you complete three stages, you complete a cycle and start the process over until the fifth cycle, you fight a different boss, a unique one, arcs. After completing four cycles, which are three stages each if you're following, you progress to the final phase, which is cycle five and the arc boss fight with the lat replicanum. As stated, this is an endless dungeon, so you go on and on and on. The overall progression and pacing is not separated by normal or veteran. So the first arc is relatively easy, like overland mobs. The second is quite similar. The third really spikes in difficulty, and the fourth is really hard. So expect the first two to be pretty easy. But as you ramp up, the third and fourth are very, very hard. The first two, you can complete solo pretty easily or go with two DPS. But that third one, it really starts and helps to have a tank with you to aggro and take all of the enemies. So again, once you complete the Thoat fight, 
one arc is done and you can continue on. There is a repeatable quest that you can complete and you pick up while you're in there. This is going to give you rewards and currency, particular access early to the new gear sets. So this can take anywhere from 15 minutes to 45, depending on your skill or group composition. So the ideal strategy right early here is to do at least one arc, maybe two on individual character swap to someone and get this quest so you can do it again if your goal is to stack up the currency which i'll show you a little bit more later and acquire the gear quickly so from this point you can exit the endless archive use the tools to reset it or just keep on going to claim further rewards your builds are essentially going to need to emphasize area damage resource sustain and survivability we'll cover that a little bit later but for now that's how progression works. Let's talk about the mechanics next of the Endless Archive and Mechanic Overview. So in the Endless Archive, there is quite a few mechanics, very new. You're gonna have something called Verses and Visions. So Verses spawn at the end of each round. Selectable buffs that will only carry through to the end of the next round. So how you need to use this strategically is the mobs are based about AOE damage and clearing them. The mini bosses are all about single target damage and sometimes survivability is really important if they're doing heavy attacks. So as you're going on to the next round, realizing that there are going to be two and a mini boss making three stages, pick your poison carefully. They're going to be randomized. There's a lot of them. I'll cover some that are very good later on. Now you have visions. Visions spawn at the end of boss rounds. Selectable buffs that will provide a permanent buff for the remainder of the run, meaning every single round therefore. So stacking important visions gives you a longer duration buff that will last for your entire run. And these are very, very critical to select the right one that fits your build. Mobs and bosses, you're gonna encounter mobs which are just random enemies selected throughout Tamriel. And bosses are also random bosses selected from a variety of content. In fact, you'll see them in dungeons, arenas, and trials, but you'll also see some quest bosses um, and they'll have similar mechanics. Not identical all the time, especially trials bosses, but very similar. So it's nice surprise to see these old bosses you fought earlier show up in the Endless Archive. A little tip for you while we're on verses and visions. There is a merchant that you can find typically after an encounter in the stage. They sell a blue item that grants a versus buff between the three varieties and categories, defensive, offensive, and utility. Those buffs last per cycle. So actually you can pop one of these consumables at the beginning of every new cycle and stack multiple buffs in one run. This is very helpful to use because you're going to accumulate a lot of the currency. And as you go deeper in those three and four arcs or beyond, having a little bit of buff here and there will really help you. The offensive one is very obviously built for DPS. The defensive one is somewhat good for tanks and healers. The only issue with them are that half of them are pretty bad for you, where the utility is very, very good all the way around. So when you click one, it's going to be random but the utility one is a little bit better odds of getting something you need. So consider stockpiling these up and popping them when you get in trouble or right as you enter a new cycle. I'm gonna list a few visions and verses that I like. Anything that amplifies your damage as a DPS early on and verses is really, really powerful. Like augmented areas, your area effect abilities have 50% more damage. Rebirth is actually very helpful because if you die, you'll instead be immune to damage and be brought back to life. So if you screw up later in those rounds, you're not paying attention, you'll pick back up instead of dying. There's also class skills have increased damage. Direct damage taken is reduced by 20%. Tom Fruery, you can gain, you can grant nearby allies ultimate. Very, very helpful. As far as vision go, one of the most powerful is boundless potential. Your ultimate cost is reduced by 2% per stack. Some of these actually stack on top of each other so you can get additional percentages if you find and select them randomly throughout your run. Extended favor, your major and minor buffs last longer. Focused effort, the chance to apply status effects increases by 10% and the damage done by status effects by 200% per stack. Lasting harm, damage over time, duration increases by 10% and hardy vitality 
vitality. You have extra health. Health is very important in here, especially as a DPS, because you will encounter a lot of enemies as you go, and it's very hard for the tank to instantly taunt 17 enemies at once. And running around with sub 22,000 HP can be very difficult on the runs, especially if you're playing in melee range. Let's go take a look at the Endless Archive rewards. So you have a lot to collect and obtain in the Endless Archives, one of the vendors on the north section of the map. You have loot, cosmetics, furnishings, and brand new powerful sets. After each boss round, you will collect a chest with a new currency. The currency is used to purchase these gear sets, cosmetics, and so forth. It's called Archival Fortune. So this is the main currency that you're going to get and collect in constant chest after almost every little area that you go in. There's also permanent upgrades that can be purchased from the Archival Fortunes after completing associated achievements. So this includes extra choices and increased strengths on versus and vision, starting with an extra threat on each run, movement speed, and so on. So if you're trying to optimize the speed of your runs or you want to be one of the leaderboard sweats, the achievements and actually knocking them out are going to be very, very important for you because the permanent upgrades will give you an enormous benefit. But they are associated achievements and require purchasing. And here is a list in visualizations of each of the new class sets. I'm not going to go over them in detail because I haven't tested them all myself. From what I understand, currently the most powerful one is for the Dragon Knight. How these work is they're class specific, skill line specific. So the Dragon Knight is Earth and Heart specific. Casting Earth and Heart ability grants you Rock Stance for 20 seconds with a 20 second cooldown. While on your front bar, you gain Molten Stance, granting you Major Heroism and Minor Heroism. While you're on your back bar, you get Obsidian Stance, increasing your healing done in damage shields by 14%. How most people are using this is just keeping this on them at all times to get that major and minor heroism just to stack a bunch of ulti gen. And here's the rest of them. Templar, Sorcerer, Nightblade, Lord Warden, Necromancer, and the Arcanist. Okay, so what should you run inside of the Endless Archive? Don't overthink this. You want to essentially play to your strengths. Either you're a solo player or a group player. Ideally, what you want to have is another person to play with or a companion and kind of set up your business builds to offset each other's weakness, providing resource sustain, off healing to each other, damage and support. The first thing I'd recommend is having a higher health pool. 24,000 health as a damage dealer helps prevent you from dying foolishly because you miss a block or a heavy attack or the tank just can't get to everything all the time. So 24k health seems to be the sweet spot to make the runs go a bit smoother. Major and minor buffs, pretty obvious here, but you want to slot and activate buffs that give you weapon spell damage and critical bonus. Food. You need food that provides a bit of recovery and health stats. Those first two arenas and runs are going to be pretty smooth. But as you get and progress further, you're going to be off healing, dodging, breaking free, sprinting. So you need some type of food that provides a bit of resource sustain. And then speaking of resource sustain, if you run out, you're dead. So you need to have a balance between resource sustain, area damage, and single target. And also healing. If you're playing with the group, it's really important to provide some off healing to each other, some splash healing. So your goal is balance self-healing, damage, resource sustain, and mobility. So let me go over some of my favorite skills for this. If you're playing in a group, it's really impactful to have undaunted skills, specifically Mystic Orb. Depending on your class, you can throw this to your ally and proc the synergy, granting resource sustain. Another reason that's so strong is the Undaunted Command Passive. Activating the synergy restores 4% of your max health, stamina, and magic. And giving that to allies is really, really important. If you don't know, typically uh, synergies can be popped or used on 20 seconds. So the classes that have more synergies that provide benefits to each other gives you a passive way to resource sustain, damage, and potentially heal. Another slept on skill is Overflowing Altar. You put this down and allies will get minor lifesteal in a massive area for 30 seconds. You can also activate a synergy to pop up that ally 65% to their max health. So those two skills are universal, very, very helpful. Another skill and stuff I like is poles, chains. So everyone has access to one called Silver Leash in the Fighters Guild. This will allow you to pull in enemies. Other individual classes have different pulls, but if you have a lot of stamina or you're a stamina DPS, consider slotting this. A skill that's slept on, useful for resource sustain for everybody is Consuming Trap. This comes from Soul Magic. It puts a damage over time on one enemy. When it dies, you restore health, magic, and stamina. So it's a 
weaker damage over time, but it pops you up full resource sustain. And then Assault and Support has some really powerful skills. So in the Assault skill line, Echoing Vigor is very strong in this context because it provides you and an ally heals over time. You can actually stack two of them together. So if you're able to cast them both, you get a lot of passive healing over a long duration of time and making it very, very good for group play. Razor Caltrops is also exceptional. Doesn't last very long, 10 seconds. Does have a bit of a high stamina cost, but it provides major breach and it reduces movement speed. So this is great to chuck on the tank or whoever is the primary focus for the damage of the enemies and do tons of AOE damage and reduce their armor. And then a uni universal defensive ultimate is reviving barrier. This is very helpful to give you a huge damage shield along with an ally as long as they're in 12 meter radius. And it does a little bit of healing as well over 15 seconds. So typically you and your partner want to have a defensive ultimate and an offensive ultimate. That way you can kind of chain them together when either of you gets in trouble. So having a blend of heals over time, burst healing, a lot of synergies, a way to get back resources, a way to help your allies if you need it, a panic button ultimate. This is going to set up a good build to get in here and at least get the thing done. Here's a quick screenshot of a one bar Oaken Soul build that's pretty good designed for this specific content as well. It is a sorcerer using Twilight Matriarch, Hardened Ward, Shot Clinch, Frags, Daedric, Prey. So you have a bit of off healing, a huge shield, Ice Heart for a shield proc, Gormons for big damage, Mother Sorrow for increased crit, and then Master's Perfected Lightning Staff, which will proc increased spell damage off of using Shot Clinch. This will provide you good AoE, good single target, and be very, very sturdy. Now, let's take a look at some of the best gear sets. Here's just a quick chart for the average player that will help you get by. Mythics, we love Oakensoul, which locks you into one bar. Hail Order gives you a lot of healing while doing damage. Death Dealer's Fate gives you huge resource pools, while Markin just passively makes you more tanky and more damage producing. Monster sets that reward survivability are good for the average player. Ice Heart produces big shield. Lug Spawn gives you back ultimate. Magma Incarnate gives you group utility. And then Raska's The Warp gives you tons of resource sustain. The 5 P sets, something like Back Alley Gourmand for damage. False Gods and Quick Serpent, those are resource sustain sets. They do come from Trials. And Ancient Dragon Guards, a decent craftable set, along with Order's Wrath, one of my favorite sets in the game. So when you very first start, just like playing any solo build or you're new to the content, spec and gear towards resource sustain, survivability with some damage, and then start taking off the training wheels. Once you start learning how the arena works, you can go to all out damage or swap your monster helm for more damage or swap a five piece for a more damage. But at the beginning, resource sustain survivability until you get the hang of it. Okay, wrapping up here, let's talk about tips and tricks for a beginner. So what you need to do is slow down. Remember, this is not timed. So it's just about surviving in, in, in deaths. So you're going to take your time and not rush through it. Take your time in picking the verses and the visions and experimenting. There's also going to be side portals that you can do to get extra verses and extra rewards. Make sure to complete those. There's really no downside. Use pull skills like Silver Leash, Beckoning Armor, Rush of Agony, and so forth. If you're on PC, you can use some add-ons like Dressing Room. You're not going to be able to use the Armory system. But as you go into those single target fights, even if you're on consoles and don't have that, you can still swap to more of a single target target focus build setup because you're going to need to swap back and forth. If you want to run optimally, consider setting up two different varieties of these individual builds to bring in here. Major and minor expedition, having some source of speed is very helpful throughout the mechanics and especially the boss fight throw out that you'll fight later on. Make sure to pre-buff. What I mean by pre-buffing is if you have skills that do not require a target that essentially give you a buff, do that before you start the encounter. You can start the encounter by entering these black little circles and that will actually spawn the enemies. So before you do that, cast one, two, three abilities or whatever you have on you. So that way you're not spending one, two, three seconds buffing when the enemies are active. Make sure to pick verses and visions that complement your build and just experiment with them. Some of them look really weird. They want to use you to use synergies. You don't know if they're very good or not. Just experiment with them. Group comp. Now find a partner that has kind of the opposite build of you, tank, DPS, 
I like the Arcanist, the Dragonite, and the Templar. All three of those classes provide really, really powerful buffs and synergies. They have great healing, survivability, and damage, and you can kind of pair them very well. The Sorcerer and the Nightblade play very well at range as damage dealers, and they're very good to use. The Necro and the Warden, I don't have nearly as the experience in here playing those, so I don't know much about them, how they function. And for damage, you need to make sure that your build has both AoE cleave damage and good single target, or you can go full sweat and set up different bars and gear sets using an add-on or just manually swapping back and forth in between those encounters as you get familiar. Okay, that wraps up our video. If you like this and you're interested in playing the Elder Scrolls Online, make sure to check out my bit.ly link in the description below and support this channel. We appreciate Bethesda sponsoring this video. I've had a great time running the Endless Archive. Tons of new stuff to collect and do, and it is very challenging. Take your time, experiment, and then focus on trying to complete that reward resetting and getting a new character if your overall goal is to collect the currency and collect the gear. And if you got something out of this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we appreciate you watching.